And maybe this is not a smart thing to say on a podcast, but I remember having a discussion with everybody that started with the prompt, how would you kill the president of the United States? And I was, I, I knew what I would do. I would use drones. And, uh, and it was, it's, it's one of those, you, you start to think, what are the countermeasures you could do? Like, could you build uh, air, air jets, like, like compressed air tanks around the perimeter of a stage to deflect them? Could you build blast shields that pop up from a stage to protect the president? Well, wait a second. Turns out that protecting a president at a, on a stage is not the extent of the problem. There's a lot of other times where he's in motion or yeah. unprotected. And I, I, even at the time, I, I knew that that was going to be a nearly impossible problem. And it's, it's a miracle we haven't seen large-scale drone attacks in the United States. We're very lucky that killers are uh, mostly very mimetic. They're mostly not original. They mostly just copy what's got attention for. Right. Uh, I mean, like the, the guy who did, I'm not, I'm not, not, not lionizing him. I, I, I want to be clear. I'm not one of those guys who thinks we should put bombers on the cover of Rolling Stone, like the Boston bomber. But the guy who did the Virginia Tech massacre, he was doing something that had not been done before at the time. And then you had all these people who copied him because of the attention that it brought. And uh, you saw a similar thing with serial killers or, or earlier in the century, yeah. where you see this huge explosion of serial killings and then it dropped off as it went out of fashion. And so my, my theory here is that the same way you saw serial killings go in and then out of fashion, so too will mass shootings and so eventually will probably drone attacks. So I'm trying to get ahead of that.